two, here's your guys' review or um, practice quiz for number two. So for the first couple, you guys had um, solving equations, right? So number one, you guys know number one that these are vertical angles, right? And you guys know vertical angles are congruent. <coughs> so since vertical angles are congruent, you set both of those equal to each other. So 3x minus 1 is equal to 6x minus 28. Now let's solve. Uh, I'll just put my variables to the left hand side. So I'm going to subtract 6x to both sides. That goes away. And then I'm going to put my constants to the right hand side. So I'm going to add by 1 to both sides. Then divide by negative 3. And x is equal to 9. Now, the next part of it is says find the measurement of each angle, right? So this is 3x minus 1, and we have 6x minus 28. 28. You substitute 9 into both of them, and you guys are going to find that you're going to get 27 degrees for both. Wait. Sorry, 26 degrees for both. And does that make sense, you guys? It does, right? Because we know vertical angles are congruent. So 26 degrees is equal to 26 degrees. Okay, number two. This is a linear pair, you guys. So these are linear pairs, or a linear pair. And you guys know, oh, a linear pair, that means linear pairs are supplementary. Meaning these two angles add up to 180 degrees. So 4x plus 18 plus x plus 12 is equal to 180. <coughs> Combine like terms, so 4x plus x is 5x, 18 plus 12 is plus 30 is equal to 180. Subtract both by 30. We get 5x is equal to 150, divide both by 5, and x is going to equal to 30. So that's your x. Now you have to plug this in to the, to the angles to find your guys' angle measurement. We have 4x plus 18 there, and x plus 12 there. 4 times 30 plus 18, and here we got 30 plus 12. Add these all up together and you guys are going to get 42 degrees and this is going to be 138 degrees. <coughs> now, does that make sense? Yes, it does because we know linear pairs are supplementary. These two angles should up to 180. 138 plus 42 is 108 degrees. So that kind of verifies our definition. Okay, moving along. <coughs> Alright, so... I think I'm going to give you guys some that you have to just fill in the reasoning, but for some of them, I will give you a word bank to choose from. So, for number three, this is given. Okay, you guys? So this is given. Now, it says MO is equal to MN plus NO. Well, take a look, you guys. MN and NO, that is MO. Right? Those two segments combined is MO. So that's called the segment addition postulate. <coughs> so that reasoning is a segment addition of postulate. Remember, it's always how did I get from how did I get each statement? <coughs> so statement three. How did we get MO is equal to NO plus OP? Well, our given statement, you guys, says MN is equal to OP. So, how I got this statement is because they substituted OP for MN. Substitute OP for MN, and then we have this line segment. MO is equal to NO plus OP. So, this is the substitution property using lines 1 and 2. You substituted MN, you substituted OP for MN to get our statement 3. Now, statement 4. 
NP is equal to NO plus NP. So this is NP, you guys. And NO and OP is that. So again, take a look, right? NO, you guys, plus the segment OP is the whole segment NP. So again, this is the segment addition postulate. And then you guys write MO is equal to NP. Well, how come we can say that? Because look at our two statements right here. MO and NP, they're both equal to NO plus OP. So we can just substitute this in for there, right? Or you guys can just substitute NP in for there. So this is the substitution property using lines three and four. And then how do we get from 5 to 6? Well, equal sign, you guys, and it going to congruency. So this is definition of congruency. <clears throat> so there's that one. Okay, number 4. We have a given statement. So how do we get from step 1 to step 2, you guys? Well, you did the distributive property. Right? We did the distributed property because you guys distributed 3 to both of those. Now, how do we get from 2 to 3? Well, 2 to 3, you guys, you did the subtraction property. And what did you subtract? You, sub you subtracted 4x from both sides in order to get statement 3. Now, how do we get to statement 4? We did the addition property. You added 18 <coughs> to both sides. And lastly, how do we get to equals 4? Division property. These are all of equality. Right? You divided both sides by 2. Okay. <coughs> Number 5. Okay, so this is given, right? L is parallel to M, and T is a transversal. Okay, so how come we can say 4 is congruent to 8? Well, since we do have parallel lines, right, 4 is congruent to 8 because corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, now how do we, how do we know 8 and 6 are congruent? Well, these are across from each other, right? So those are vertical angles. So vertical angles are congruent. And lastly, angle 4 is congruent to angle 6, you guys. Well, if angle 4 is congruent to 8 and 8 is congruent to 6, then we can say 4 is congruent to 6 by the transitive property. Using lines 2 and 3. Okay, number 6. Now this is just using your guys' definitions and identifying what property is which. This is reflexive, because reflexive property, you guys, is when it's um, congruent or equal to, to itself. <coughs> B, if A is congruent, if angle A is congruent to angle B, and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A is congruent to angle C. This is the transitive property. And lastly, for C, you guys, so look at the first statement and look at the second statement, right? What's the difference? You're adding O line segment OP to both sides, so this is just the addition property. Okay, and for seven, you guys. So given line line one is parallel to line two, and L three is parallel to L four. <coughs> now we have to say why we know what these statements are, given that we have parallel lines. Well. How come we can say 3 and 13 are congruent to each other? Because if we're looking at these two parallel lines, this is the interior and these are the exterior, right? So we have alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles, right? Because they're both on the exterior and they're on opposite sides. So uh, we got alternate exterior angles theorem
okay? Now, why can we say 9 is congruent to 11? Well, how come we can say 11 and 9 are congruent? Well, we have parallel lines here, right? 9 and 11, you guys, are corresponding angles. And since we have two parallel lines, we know we got corresponding angles postulate. Corresponding angles postulate, you guys, says corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, 10 and 14. So let's take a look at 10 and 14. So look at these two parallel lines, right, you guys? These are both on the interior and they're congruent. So what we have is the alternate interior angles theorem. Alternate interior angles theorem. Which state in your guys' notes, alternate interior angles are congruent. Next, 9 and 10. How come we can say that those two are supplementary? Well, they share a common side and a common vertex. So that is a linear pair, you guys. So, and you guys know linear pairs are supplementary. So linear pairs postulate. Number 5, why can we say 6 and 11 are supplementary? Well, look at these two parallel lines, right, you guys? These are both on the interior angle, and they are both on the same side. So, we got same side, interior angles theorem. And lastly, why is 12 congruent to 14? Well, they are across from each other, you guys. And you guys know that that is the vertical angles theorem, which state that vertical angles are congruent. So, remember you guys can use your notes, so just make sure you guys practice and make sure your notes are very neat and ordered because it will help you for your guys' quiz tomorrow. Alright, good luck you guys, peace.